welcome everybody. Thank you, Chamber, for hosting this event. All right. I've never had the clicker before, so <laughs> this is exciting. Ah. This is our city council, my partners on the city. We're a, device, a di diverse group. We have contractors, builders, uh, veterans, business owners, and governmental experience. Um, so we're a pretty di diverse group, and uh, I think we work very well together. All right. And Jeff is going to talk about our ARPA and federal dollars. Yeah, so uh, ARPA and many government agencies around the country received ARPA funding, uh, us included. Uh, the city received a little under $3 million total in ARPA funding, two different uh, sections, but you could spend it all uh, up front, or you can obligate it all up front. And then when you receive the second half, you can uh, pay for those remaining projects. A couple of things we did with our ARPA funding is the Western Gateway project that you all see happening now uh, was an eighth uh, out to Pacific Court, right out to the city limits. Uh, that's going to include a whole bunch of stuff that we'll talk about a little bit later uh, in the presentation. A couple other things, the automated meter, meter infrastructure, which is the AMI that's mentioned there, that will help us in, uh, increase the efficiency of our operations tremendously. And people will be able to see in real time what their water usage is. So if you have a leak, we're gonna know about it immediately. Uh, and that's very helpful ongoing into the future. The other part of that is instead of two employees taking three weeks to read every meter in the city manually, we'll be able to drive by initially uh, and get radio reads from those new meters. And eventually, we won't even have to drive by. We'll have radio towers throughout the city that will transmit that information directly to, and that's when you'll be able to see it in real time. Uh, a couple other things. Um, We've received uh, safe routes to school grants uh, that we will have crosswalks and those types of safety amenities for children getting to school. And then a couple of infrastructure projects, the reclaimed water tank is a big one that's out not too far from here, and a new water line for the uh, well one of the high school tank. Right. And it would be worth noting that without our delegation, our 35th district, Senator Sheldon, Dan Griffey, Drew McEwen, we couldn't do half the projects that we do. So, and I don't see them here, but thank you. All right. We welcomed two new department directors uh, this year. Mike Giddens, the finance director, and Jay Hill, the community economic development director. And Jeff has their backgrounds. Yeah. So uh, as you all know, I'm sure finding excellent employees for your organization, not only now, for the last several years, has been very difficult. And we're no different. So uh, we had a, an exceptionally long, unfortunately, search. But it did end, fortunately, with the hiring of uh, Mike Gillens as our new finance director. Uh, I think he'll be able to help us continue the performance that we've had over the last several years in our, uh, in our budget development and our uh, yearly audits. Uh, and with the focus on transparency, so the public is comfortable with how your tax dollars are being spent. The, he has a lot of experience in Washington State, so he's familiar with all of the local rules and how those things work. Uh, Jay Hill uh, started with us about a month ago. Uh, he's taken over community and economic development. Tremendous amount of experience in land use planning, uh, building codes, uh, code enforcement, all within the state of Washington and some in other states. He's worked in Alaska and Idaho along with Washington. So brings a lot of experience, and I think uh, both of these ad additions are going to serve the community very well. And we're happy to have them. Yes. All right. All right. <coughs> we're Energy Gov Online Permitting. Uh, the council's been dedicated to improving software and systems over the last four years to make things easier and faster. And Jeff will have some more details on those. So what the online permitting portal does is you can submit your permit from anywhere for any uh, project that you're looking at. You can even do it from the beach, but if you do that, don't tell us. <laughs> uh, if uh, when you're looking at tracking status and everything else, you can log into your permit uh, from wherever you are, uh, see what's been reviewed, what components still have to go, who it's assigned to. So if you need to get a hold of a, a specific individual, you know who that is, what their email address is. And we've been able to reduce our single family home permit time to 13.3 days, which is fantastic um, wow. in my experience throughout the state. So. All right. And returning functions after <laughs> COVID is our Callahan Park um, Garden, 
or Arts Commission and for our first annual Movies in the Park, um, I had saw that Lacey was doing that and I thought, what a great idea. And I mentioned it and the council said, hey, let's do it. Very well attended um, and a lot of compliments on having you know, more stuff downtown for people to do. And uh, Jeff, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, we, uh, we hope to expand, expand that event for next year. Um, it didn't come without a few hiccups though. So when we first got the projector and the blow-up screen, uh, learning how to set the ties so we're not chasing that thing all over the <laughs> park it was fun. Uh, the other fun part was, uh, just as a trivia question, how many city employees or people affiliated with the city do you think it takes to read instructions off the projector <laughs> backwards in French? And on a shirt. We and on and a shirt. projected on a, uh, on a white t-shirt. Our answer is three. Yours may vary, but we, we eventually got it figured out. And notable projects, Jeff, just want to take that. Yeah, so a couple projects. One, Western Gateway, uh, we've talked a little bit about. Uh, the Civic Center parking lot is ongoing right now. You've probably seen some of that work if you've driven by. Uh, we are uh, producing that project with permeable pavers, which is something similar to what the Transit Authority did downtown on Railroad. And it's really to honor the vision of the Downtown Visioning Group in 2015-16 that identified that area as a green loop uh, to treat stormwater. Uh, what those papers do is it allows us to infiltrate all the stormwater directly on site and instead of having to set aside a whole big other area for a stormwater pond, you know, a big thing that basically only is designed to hold water. Other elements of that project include uh, our basketball court and our pickleball court, which we could not have done without the help of the <coughs> Centennial Lions Club, so we appreciate their efforts on that. And hopefully that will be done uh, first week of November, uh, barring any snowstorms or rain deluges, anything like that. Last one is the Shelton Village, Veterans Village groundbreaking. Uh, you might have noticed right now 13th Street is closed and they are doing that, uh, they have that closure done to install new water and sewer lines to serve that development as well as developments uh, on the far side of it in the future. So uh, once that work is done, you'll start to see the buildings go up on that site. Western Gateway. Yep. And here's, uh, here's the big one, $2.6 million in funding uh, for Western Gateway. Um, this one, we used uh, a lot of our ARPA dollars, the American Rescue Plan Act dollars for that. Uh, we'll have brand new pavement, which I, one of the things that I heard when I started here and have heard continuously until the project got underway is that's like a, a, a ski mogul course. It's, you know, bumps everywhere. So we're going to get that fixed. We're going to have uh, new water and sewer main services, uh, curb gutter and sidewalk, and with the partnership with uh, Mason Transit Authority, we'll have a new bus shelter, uh, and it's a pull-out bus shelter, so it won't be stopping traffic or anything like that. I think it's going to be a great addition, and in the future, uh, we will also have the multimodal path that runs along the north side of railroad uh, from basically Front Street, or First Street, uh, all the way out that will provide an amenity uh, for folks that wish to walk, bike, all kinds of good stuff. Public Works, uh, we received a award two years in a row, and Jeff can explain. Yeah, so we received the Outstanding Plan of the Year Award from the Department of Ecology. Uh, we work very hard, and our folks down there at the wastewater plant work incredibly hard to protect the health of Oakland Bay and Hammersley Inlet. Very important to us, and we're very proud of them receiving that award. The other one we received in partnership with the Squawks Island Tribe and the Washington State the Washington Correction Center is a reclaimed water tank, which will eventually uh, reduce the use of uh, 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 fresh groundwater uh, and increase the stream flows to Goldsboro Creek, which is a huge improvement. And I, uh, I know all of the partners uh, that we <coughs> produce this project with are very happy about it. Public Works Stormwater, as the last census, we had, we increased our, our population over 10,000 and we were required to um, join the state in our phase two permit. And I'll let Jeff take that. Yeah, so NPDES, you might hear that term quite a bit, National Pollution Elimination Discharge System. So this is a permit under the Federal Clean Water Act that's issued to each state and then each state breaks it down into their 
uh, municipalities and counties and how they're going to uh, regulate and meet the requirements of the state permit. So this is uh, our portion of it. We were entered into phase two, which includes a whole lot more uh, work that has to be done on our stormwater system on an annual basis. Um, so we were able to achieve compliance with that. We have the new um, uh, stormwater pollution manual that we produced for, and just real briefly, the way that I explain this is, what Ecology gives us is about a thousand pages of incredibly dense technical language that is incredibly difficult to understand. We tried to break that down so that people uh, can read and understand the requirements of the permit and make that available to people so they know uh, what uh, what the requirements are and it's not going to be a surprise at the end. So. Continuing on that subject. Yep. Uh, public Works for the local road safety plan. Uh, the city last year created the first local road safety plan in the city's history. And what that produced for us is uh, grant dollars from uh, the Department of Transportation that will allow us to complete all of these improvements. You're not eligible for these dollars unless you have a local road safety plan. So once that was completed, we were able to, to receive funding for this. Most of this is no match. So it's nothing that comes out of the city's uh, general fund or other funds uh, to pay for these projects. So you can see the locations there on the map, and if you have any questions about what the specific improvements are, let me know, give me a call, I'll be happy to talk over those with you. Notable event this year, the, the voters passed our EMS levy. Uh, it was actually a renewed levy, and if that didn't pass, the city would have had to probably redo their budget uh, and make some big decisions yeah. and, and this was a great thing and I want to thank the voters who voted for this. Yeah. We wanted to make sure that uh, Central Mason Fire could continue to provide the exceptional service that they have been providing and uh, we really want to thank the people that supported that, uh, that initiative. All right. The statistics? Yeah. Let's see those. Okay. All right. Therapeutic courts. Uh, Jeff will talk about Judge Greer's uh, yeah, so our municipal court, Judge Greer and his team over there, Diane Smolinski, have uh, uh, received a grant for a therapeutic court, and basically what that is, it's a diversion program. So if you meet the criteria there, you're at least 18, you have a substance abuse or mental health disorder, you're eligible to enter into this court, and you don't have to uh, go through all the other criminal processes as long as you meet the requirements. One of those, uh, you meet or between that. Work. So looking at uh, things that are unique to our, our community and making sure that the solutions that are recommended will work here, at least as best as we, best as we know. Uh, the, the group met uh, six times and the last meeting was last Tuesday morning. We honed it down to six recommendations, I believe and shared those with the community at the event on Tuesday night, and then we'll share those recommendations with our city council in November and talk about how to implement those and just as importantly, how to pay for those. Um, the event Tuesday night was great. We had uh, the presentations, but really what it was focused on was those one-on-one -on -one conversations where you actually speak with people, you can ask follow-up questions and get a full understanding uh, of the issue and kind of the solutions that we're looking at. and. I thought it was a great event. It was uh, uh, a lot of fun, I thought. All right, here's some statistics from the police department. And there's a notable thing that Officer Lawson um, encountered a young man that didn't have any shoes or clothes and, and took him and bought him some. Yeah. And got him housed. And got him housed. Yes. And 2023 projects. So uh, we have a lot of things coming up for 2023, and I don't have this memorized, so I'm gonna turn around and read a little bit. Uh, Olympic Highway North Pavement Project, uh, that's another one where we've had some, uh, uh, need to do some preventative maintenance, but uh, we also need to do some overlay work on that road. So we're stretching our dollars, our available resources as far as we can, and we're planning to pave the travel lanes, not the full width of the roadway. That allows us to fix the a longer length of the road for the same amount of dollars and not necessarily the parking areas on the side. 
Uh, Wallace Neyland uh, Boulevard pavement overlay, we'll be doing the same thing from the uh, intersection at Olympic Highway North and Wallace Neyland out to, I believe it's Spring Road. Um, so that, that work will be going on. We're going to do everything we can to get that done in the summer so it does not impact uh, school services at all. Uh, railroad track crossing removal, that's another grant that we received from uh, the State Department of Transportation and that is a payment for 100% of the removal of the railroad tracks at um, uh, First Street uh, right there by the bridge. So that will come out and be taken care of. Uh, we talked about a little bit about the well one to the high school tank and the automated meter infrastructure and then those local road safety uh, programs. The other thing we wanted to do was the front street paving. So that's not anybody that's driven on front street knows that that's one that definitely needs some help. Uh, so we're not going to contract for that. We're going to do that with teams that are uh, currently city employees and not going to be a full dig out and rebuild or anything like that, but we are going to do our best to make that area as smooth as we possibly can. And then uh, Northcliffe North Cliff neighborhood park improvements. Our parks, facilities, and recreation, parks, recreation, and facilities director has been working with uh, the neighbors up there to find out what amenities they want, and we're going to install those next year. And that's all we have. All right. Um, just uh, notable that uh, Shelton is is ready to grow. So if you know any developers that want to grow, we're open for business. <laughs> <laughs>